Hi everyone, this uh, video is a uh, Python for beginners using the Azure SDK uh, for Python. And so I just want to show how to build a Python script from scratch, set up VS Code and kind of uh, a simple kind of dev environment uh, settings and write some code to create a storage account and, and upload a file. And it's all with Azure SDK uh, for Python. So you may wonder like why Python and why not Terraform or Azure CLI? You know, uh, those are really good choices and probably those are recommended uh, for starters. But when you want to get to really uh, highly customized scenarios or uh, highly customized requirements, uh, you know, with the versatile and customizable nature of Python, with uh, the Azure SDK, that's when uh, it would be more appropriate. So let's say you're extending an existing application and it wants to have very tight integration with various Azure resources, managing them, configuring them, let's say upload uh, files to a storage account, that would be uh, appropriate. Okay, so, so if you're starting from scratch and you're on a Windows environment, where do we start? Well, first of all, we need to have uh, let's say we need to have to download Python for Windows. So you just go to uh, python.org, download it, install it. And so that installs the uh, Python interpreter. Uh, next, you know, uh, I'm using uh, VS Code and ensure you're installing the just uh, Python extension for VS Code. And this allows to have IntelliSense, debugging, and and basic uh, tooling. So here in VS Code, I have the extension here. We have uh, workspace environments, the Python packages that come in installed. I already have a lot of Azure ones that already. And then with the this Python extension, you can also switch between different uh, interpreters, right? So if you're uh, want to stick with an older version for a certain with the existing code you have or you pull code from somewhere and that relies on an older version for stability you have that flexibility okay um, look at very simple uh, Python script here right and how we can use VS code so you create a file uh, dot pi right and it will recognize that and then this code here run python and enter your name my name here and then i'll put that out and as you can see there's a debugger so run and debug and enter my name and you can see various variables okay and and step through them okay so that's really the basic features of the extension and there's more uh, capabilities but that's the extent of the what I'm showing you so okay now let's move on to the concept of uh, pip install so pip is a, a kind of a package manager that comes with the uh, Python install and we can install various uh, uh, packages and libraries okay so you can kind of go you can you could go like pip install and then the, the package name uh, the recommended way I would do is just to put all your uh, packages in your requirements dot uh, txt right so that's a uh, python convention and we can uh, run this and that will you know install uh, the packages and these are have already been installed okay and the next thing um, uh, is recommended to do is good practice is that uh, when you're starting off on a project you should have let's say a virtual environment okay a virtual environment is simply a, a folder in your um, your project your working folder and it is just uh, an isolated environment of files specific to uh, versions of pa packages that you installed and also even the, the Python interpreter that you that you choose okay because if you're working on multiple projects and you have different uh, various they all depend on various versions 
you can um, uh, segregate them in virtual environments. And to do that, you run Python dash n vnv dot uh, vnv, right? So I want to name my virtual environment uh, dot vnv. So okay, we run that. So what we notice new runs create? Do you want to select it for your workspace folder? Yes. So what simply happens is that your v dot vnv folder is created. Various libraries are are brought in, but if you have any unique uh, libraries, right, and it even has the uh, Python version as well here. So if I want to have my command shell, you know, working in the context of a virtual environment, uh, we simply run a dot uh, vnv uh, scripts. Whoops, no, no. So what's wrong one? It should be activate dot vnv activate. So I I'm I'm in here. So I go Python um, dash version. So within this, I'm using uh, Python 3.114. If I go pip list, we can see you know various packages and libraries that are installed with this version. And if I go to let's say install that requirements txt file okay it's collecting it and and i believe it's being installed there so now okay let's see did it finish okay i think it's still installing that List. Okay, now that we've um, looked at kind of if it's what packages are installed, now we see kind of the Azure management ones in my requirements.txt file, and and that's great. Okay, we can start to uh, develop uh, some code, so we don't have to add code in the .vnv file here, but that's just kind of in the background. So let's create a new file and I'm gonna call it create az storage. Oops, create storage, storage, storage.py, okay. Uh, with that, we want to bring in some import statements. And so um, after we've uh, imported uh, all the uh, libraries, now the first step is to log into my Azure environment, my tenant and uh, subscription, uh, create the storage account and into an existing uh, resource group that I, I, that's already created and upload a file, which is this one right here. Okay, into a blob container, and we're going to use that, uh, do that with using the Azure SDK libraries. So there is a um, management client, okay, and a kind of storage uh, management client, and a blob service client that we'll be using. Okay, so <clears throat> the kind of management client is more for kind of administration. Uh, kind of creating the resource, configuring kind of the life, uh, you know, general lifecycle management where um, things like the service clients uh, are more kind of using the service, right? The Azure resource, right? So in this case, I need the blob service client to, you know, upload, upload the file. And so, you know, it's maybe more geared to the persona of, let's say, a, a developer, let's say where management client is more the administrator or DevOps engineer. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Okay, so um, right now I basically um, just, you know, kind of log logged in more or less right here and already. And so that will uh, kind of grab the kind of login uh, kind of like uh, session, right, based, based off of that, okay. And uh, next is 
you know, I generally like to set up uh, environment variables of a subscription ID for this uh, for this demo purposes. Uh, print it out, and so the first uh, you know real use of um, the Azure SDK is getting the resource management client. So I pass in the credential subscription ID and I want to get the uh, resource group, okay? And uh, with that, I, I create or update um, in, this, in, my, in this situation, since it's already created, it's gonna get um, the uh, object of the already existing resource group, okay? So yeah, bring in the next bit of code here for that. I'll bring it up, okay. And, and then I continue on uh, to like provision the storage account. So I use the storage management client, passing credential subscription ID. Uh, here I uh, create a uh, storage account name and kind of randomize uh, a, a, a suffix, right? To keep it uh, uh, unique, uh, more or less unique, okay? And go ahead, check if the name is available um, and if it is, then good. If not, then print that it's already in use and then go ahead and create. So it's cool that um, uh, we can have a polar here, right? Because it's not immediate when it gets created. Uh, while, while it's creating, it can take like, you know, a few seconds, 10 seconds. Um, so it's good to have that uh, polar um, while it's, it's waiting for it, you know. Um, and uh, well, once that is created, uh, again, we use the uh, storage client uh, object and get the keys based on the resource group and account name, print that out, um, and then, you know, we establish the connection string. And then, um, and the next step is to create a storage account blob container. Right, and a blob container is where we need to actually store a, a file. Okay, and we call it uh, blob container dash zero one. So we go ahead and create that, right? And it's provisioned, and then pass, and then you know I pick up the uh, sample file right here. Okay, uh, which is just kind of very local in my project folder, and using the uh, blob service client. You make create a connection, you know, get the container, and then um, get the uh, blob uh, client. And with that client, we can right here uh, open the file and upload the the file. Okay. And lastly, I just simply um, ask if I want to clean it up uh, and. If I say yes, I use the storage client to basically to you know delete the resource to clean it up. So why don't we go ahead and try to run this and then see see what happens. So there's my subscription ID. Uh, my resource group is demo group. We get the primary key, a connection string. We need that to make that connection, uh, create the uh, blob container, and took the file and uploaded it. Okay, so why don't we switch over to the, oh, so right here uh, is the demo group resource group. Hit refresh, and there's my storage account. Okay, so here's my storage account. We gotta go to the containers. So here's the blob container 01 that was just created. And then I go inside into this and see the uh, file that was uploaded. And now we can kind of, we can see the contents. So, uh, if we go edit, we can see that the contents match right here. Okay, cool. It's prompt me to delete it. Okay, unfortunately it's not picking it up if it was in the run in the terminal. Let's see here, let's run it again. So 
So we hit yes. Okay, and that deleted the storage account. So that deleted it. So I just ran um, with the uh, uh, run code uh, with the play button, but uh, how do we run it without that kind of in the command, right? So I can go Python, run the file. So here it goes. So as it's creating, now, now the values of let's say the resource group name storage account name is all hard coded but what if we want to have you know uh, arguments right to pass in right to make it uh, more uh, dynamic so how would we do that okay so i'm gonna hit y to delete that just to clean up that uh, storage account but but in my next video i will show how that how we can uh, create a Windows uh, command line kind of executable and we where we can you know pass in things like uh, Arguments here, right like name resource group location. I'll show that in the next video. So I'll I'll see you there and uh, Also, I have this code in my github repo, which um, you can find in my uh, link in my description Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching